I am back with another video. Good afternoon. Thank you all for tuning in if you're watching right now, man. Um, I got another message and uh, I know you saw the title. So am I comfortable? And this is a question that you have to ask yourself on a continued basis because, you know, uh, in the generation that we live in today, if you look at our cell phones that we have, right? So how many people that are watching this video right now can attest to that every time they're looking down at their cell phone, maybe every week they're seeing an app being updated or their phone is getting a new update or, you know, something's changing to making the phone better. Um, I like to use that in comparison to making ourselves better in the same way because update, upgrade, things change. So I couldn't stay the same. And it's one of the lines that I used in Mind Over Actions. But um, I have a message that I want to deliver to you guys. And it's actually a personal situation that I just literally dealt with. And I was like, you know what? It sat on my heart. Let me just present it. Um, so am I comfortable? I started working for the bank uh, about almost about two years ago. So uh, when I first was getting into working at the bank, I went through this program called Bankworks. It was a class where they kind of taught you about the basics of, you know, the banking industry and things like that. I often told myself, man, you know, um, I'm not good with cash, so like if I go into banking, then I just I have to be a banker. Like I, I can't be, you know, a teller because I just thought it in my mind at that time you couldn't tell me that I was gonna be a teller. I was like, no, I just wouldn't work in the bank. So actually about time I got done with the class and I went and I filled out the applications and everything for the banks, I only applied for personal banker positions, but you know, our teacher was like, You wasn't supposed to do that, you was really supposed to apply for the teller position, but you know, God is good. And uh, I made it into being a banker, just stepping into the bank. Uh, and uh, here I am, you know. So what I have to say about that is last year, our company went through a lot of changes, like a lot, a lot, a lot of changes. And they started changing um, our roles around. So when I started getting news of this, I was like, dang, like, you know, what's kind of be, what's going to be a part of this change? And uh you know, I was like, man, I can't be no teller. I can't count. That was my excuse. And oftentimes we put ourselves in these situations where we we'll use words that we not, we're not even realizing that these words are actually stopping us from, you know, pushing forward. And my word was, you know, I can't count. So I had a situation at one of the jobs that I worked at before and, you know, I miscounted the drawer and it was a big problem. And, you know, I was like, you know what? I just really don't even like handling cash, period. Uh, so... Our role started switching to basically be able to do everything inside of the bank. So, you know, as I've been walking with God, he has been showing me that, you know, you can't stay comfortable. You've got to challenge yourself and you've got to want to change. You know, you've got to want to be better. You've got to, you know, you got to up, upgrade, you know, things in your life. And when you start pulling away from things, that's something that you need to probably start addressing. So there's situations where you'll start backing away from certain things that are being presented. And these are the things that you're going to have to start maybe saying, hey, why am I backing away from it? You might be backing away from it because it makes you uncomfortable. Um, change is uncomfortable. If you're comfortable, you cannot grow. Comfortability is routine and it's what you know. And it's it's easy to do. It's habit. And I did talk about that before. You know, I don't want this video to be too long. I'm going to try to get through this real quick for you guys. But um Back to what I was saying, I was terrified, man. Like, I was just like, man, I'm going to lose my job. I'm not going to be able to work here. I'm going to be a teller. I'm, I'm going to be short and all these things I was thinking in my head. But, you know, I didn't allow that to stop me. Even though I was uncomfortable, even though it made me afraid to do it, I stepped out of my own comfort zone and I started, you know, stepping into saying, hey, you know, maybe I can do this. Maybe this is something that, you know, um, I can learn and grow from. So I was very uncomfortable with handling money in front of people, you know, face to face. Um, and another one of my uh, uh, excuses was, you know, fear of counting. Um, I can't count. And then it handicapped me and it stopped me from being able to move forward. So the situation that happened that took place uh, was that was this. And I'll talk to you guys about how I started realizing this about my own self. But long story short, I 
was able to actually go to a meeting with my company and actually speak about the changes that were taking place at you know my job. Um, that was an experience in itself because I was actually vulnerable and I told them, you know, hey, I don't really like this. I don't like the fact that I have to go and be a teller. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at. But honestly, it was just because of initially me not wanting to be a teller. So I actually communicated that and I talked about it. And then the first day, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to dive in. I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to get it done. I'm not going to be afraid to do this. Uh, my first day on a drawer, and uh, the branch that I work at is super, super, super busy. It's busy all the time. I mean, I, like, it's like you just never get a break. It's, it's busy. So one of the busiest branches in the district. But anyway, I was like, you know what? I'm going to hop on a drawer. So I honestly didn't want to do it face-to-face, -face, so I started learning on the drive through So I was working in the drive through and it was a busy Friday and my drawer wound up being short ten dollars and my excuse from that point was see this is why i didn't want to do it you know see this is why i didn't want to be a teller um and you know i remember just feeling super bad about it like man like this is frustrating you know i don't want to do this this is complicated you know a, a large part of that was when i jumped in you know i didn't necessarily know the tools that i had to use so I wound up being short that day and I said, you know what, no matter how uncomfortable I am, no matter what it is that I have to do, I'm going to just continue to own this and I'm going to just step into it no matter if it makes me uncomfortable. But here's the key to my message, you know, for, for, for today. I realized I was uncomfortable. So I forced myself to do it until I got comfortable, but that was the problem. I wound up going back hopping right back on the teller line and i mean every single day i walked into the branch i opened up a drawer because i just didn't want to shy away from it but i didn't realize that i was doing it in a comfort zone because i wasn't actually face to face with customers because i was doing it in the drive through so a lot of time took place and uh changes continued to happen and then we incorporated a new model that we had to do and um basically we have to flow around the branch and we have to help customers when we see fit uh, and when this started presenting itself, I kind of started realizing that every time I pulled a drawer, I only did it in the back. Uh, and it wasn't until a coworker had to actually bring this to my attention. And when it was brought to my attention, I had that very same feeling where I was just like, kind of justifying why I was doing it in the back because I still was uncomfortable with doing it face to face. Not that I didn't want to do it, but I hadn't realized that I was comfortable with what I was doing. Uh, and that's why I talk a lot about being mindfully aware of who you are, because if I hadn't been mindfully aware of who I was, I would not have even recognized that I had shied away in the first place. But again, time, time passed and I didn't notice it then. But then the second time it came around, she was like, this is the schedule and this is what it's going to be. And then I was just like, you know what? Dang. I realized that the only reason I said no before was because it made me uncomfortable. I realized that I actually shied away and that I actually got used to being comfortable with opening a drawer every day and doing what I was doing. I, I created a, my own comfort zone. And when we tend to do that, um, we often just like I said, we don't realize how that affects us. So it did take for somebody else to actually present it and kind of forced me into doing it, but not necessarily that I was just like, no, I'm not going to do it. It didn't really take that big of a push for me to realize it because I spend time with God on a day to day basis. And I often ask him, you know, where where are the areas in my life that I can be open to change? Where are the areas in my life where you can show me that? You know, if, if there's something I need to change or there's something that I need to do. And then when that happened, and that very first day, I was like, you know what? This is the same thing. I'm going to own it. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm not shying away from this new challenge. So instead of allowing that to sink in, I, again, I stepped forward. But the greatest part about me facing the fact that I didn't want to count money face to face was 
two things. I let go of telling myself I can't count. I let go of the words that I would say that stop me from doing it. And you have to. Uh, and this is why I want to do a video on negativity and positivity because they don't work together. Because I had, a, had I have said in my head, hey, you know, I can't count. I would have been way more afraid to do it versus, you know, saying, you know what? I'm going to do this and I'm going to let it be what it is. If I make a mistake, then I have to learn from it. But immediately, as soon as I went to the front and I started working in the front, I started learning new things like that. But that's the problem and the issue that we face with God because we get comfortable. Even if we're walking with him, you know, we get comfortable and he can't teach you anything new if you don't step out of your comfort zone, if you're not, you know, challenging yourself to grow, just like your cell phone, it updates every week because without those updates, then what happens? You know, your phone doesn't work properly, it freezes. And that's the same way with us. You know, we have to learn and we have to grow and we have to realize, you know, the things that we do individually. And this is why I say, I try to bring awareness to your yourself, your own self, because, if I wasn't aware of myself, then God couldn't have communicated to me where the areas in which I needed to grow. And that that hit me because it was just like, wow, you know, man, I needed that. I needed, you know, that little bit of a push to say, hey, go step out in the front and, and do everything. I felt so good because not only had I worked in the back, I could work in the front and then I learned two new things. Then I do, you know, things on the banker side. It was like, wow, okay, now I don't really have to ask. You got to ask a few times until you get it. And I see a lot that goes on as far as when people give, you know, like feeding the homeless. And, and one thing that always pops into my mind, it's like if you bring them food, then you're going to have to bring them food the next day because they don't have a place to stay. They don't have a job. They don't have, you know, something where they can actually provide for themselves. Whereas mind over actions and what God can do for you is when you give your life to him, he can guide you on the path of you helping yourself first. Because let's just say like we're on an airplane, right? And if the plane was going down or it's crashed, whatever the case may be, even when they're doing the instructions and they're telling you, that's basically what the Bible is. It's an instruction manual on your life. So they tell you, hey, um, if there's an incident where we're running out of oxygen, please put on your mask first before you help your neighbor. Because if you don't have a mask on and you're trying to help your neighbor to put the mask on, you can't breathe. So uh, the Bible has a verse where it talks about you have to take the speck out of your eye in order to see one in someone else's. So that's why we have to look at ourselves. Um, and that's how all of that ties in together. And I just was like, wow, like that was a part of growing pains because it's like, you ever heard of that phrase when, it, when it's called growing pains? It's like um, you get to a point where you're comfortable and you're safe. You're in, your, you're in a safe zone. So you feel like, you know, you're good. This is routine. This is what you're supposed to do. And, you know, there's nothing new ever in your life, but You've got to challenge yourself to learn. You have to, because if you sit and you're comfortable, then you won't learn. And I would not have been able to present this to you guys had it not happened. Because again, as I stated before, I'm still a baby and I'm still walking. I still make mistakes, you know, but sometimes it is going to take a little bit of time. But when you're manifested, you know, with God and you have a sense of self, then those things will come around. And now... That situation where I was uncomfortable, I'm able to use that as a message for other people that may not be able to, you know, see that immediately, you know, and that's why I say everyone has a testimony and you got to tell your story because everything that goes on in your life, you can use that as a message to give back to somebody else. You know, am I comfortable? This is a question that you should probably ask yourself every week and this is actually something that i've just thought of right now that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna ask myself that question every week every single week give me just one second when you when you get comfortable you stop learning 
uh, one of my quotes actually ties into that. Uh, there's a beautiful message in all of life's lessons. And that experience for me, it happened probably over a period of probably four months because we went through a lot of changes and things were very difficult. So it happened over a period of about four months. But um, I was amazed at how it came to me and I was just like, wow, you know, on this next step that I wanna take is I'm going to California. Um, I'll be flying out tomorrow morning. And one of the big reasons is because, you know, a lot of my life, I never really got to celebrate a birthday. A lot of my life, I never really even had, you know, money to do anything. I mean, I had parties here and there. Um, I was in a very bad, you know, mental state this time last year, you know, in 2018. Uh, and, you know, pretty much all of that year I spent reflecting on myself. I spent reading. I spent, you know, figuring out what makes, you know, me tick, what gets me angry, the things that I do, why I do them. Um, and that gave me a lot of, you know, understanding and a lot of the reasons now why I'm happy, it's not financial stability. It's just from a standpoint of knowing that, you know, I have somebody that can teach me things, which is God, you know, and I don't ever have to worry about whether or not I'm doing right or wrong, you know, because he's going to correct me, you know, in, in any moment or any instant in my life. Because going back four months, I didn't realize that two times I shied away from doing something. But every single time, it's just because you know something and it doesn't mean that it's it's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. And I said this before in my Mind Over Action song. Um, I had the knowledge of knowing that um, I need to challenge myself, but I hadn't applied it until I actually stepped up and said, you know what, I'm going to own this. And this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to learn. And you can see the benefit in it right away because as soon as I did it, the very same day, I learned something new. And then I became a little bit comfortable like, oh, okay, I got this now. But that was my reminder then at that time for me to look and reflect and say, are you comfortable? Because going forward, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You got to take what you go through learn from it, apply it to your life, and then teach it back. Mind over actions. Y'all be blessed. I will have some more videos for you guys in California. Um, I hope to maybe kind of put out some of the things that I've been creating um, musically. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I'll just start putting them out, I don't know, uh, pretty soon. But look out for my video coming out on February 4th. It is my video on love. I'm out. Y'all be blessed. Don't be stressed.